Hey guys, welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This time taking a look at working with proxy files with uh, 4K video footage. Now, I don't normally have access to 4K footage. I actually shoot a lot of my films on high-end digital SLRs, although I recently worked with the Blackmagic, which is 2K. So, Videoblocks have kindly provided me with some 4K content, which is really cool. And the cool bonus super perk of using some of the Videoblocks stock media is that they have kindly agreed to offer you guys a seven-day free trial. I'm, I'm doing jazz hands, you can't really uh, see. But, um, and that basically gives you unlimited access to all their stuff, although maybe set yourself like a uh, a timer before it auto-renews, and then you can just end your subscription if you don't like it. Anyway, I'll tell you a bit about video blocks at the end. The bottom line is we're going to be working with some great 4K footage, and we're going to find out how to use proxy files so that your really slow MacBook can keep up with the intense footage. So let's just jump straight in. I am going to import some footage with Command I, and here we have our four clips. You can see their wonderful um, nature aerial shots, which is really cool. Um, pretty great stuff. I'm going to import all of these, and as I press import, you see we get some options. We get copy to library if we want. We're actually going to leave them in place. They're fine in the folder they are, but the most important thing we can do is press create proxy media. We're going to tick this box here. And I'm going to uncheck all the other options. The rest, I just uh, accidentally pressed a button there. The rest of the options are absolutely fine. So we're going to go ahead and press import. Let's close out of the import box. And in the background now, if we press command 9 and reveal the uh, background tasks, you can see that it's transcoding all of these clips. And essentially what it's doing is uh, creating a low resolution version of the file. Now, if we were to go ahead and import one of these clips into the timeline, it's going to adjust the timeline into a 4K setting, but by default, it's not actually going to be working at proxy resolution, which means if your computer's slow, uh, mine might be able to keep up, we'll see. You can see it's every now and then it will drop a frame during playback, which isn't ideal, especially if you're trying to get the rhythm of your piece right. You really want to be able to cut just fine without any lag or playback and that's because it is trying to play back a 4k sequence if we press the inspector button over here and press info this is going to give us info on the footage you can see it's 3840 pixels by 2160 at 50 frames a second so it's it's a high frame rate and high resolution file which is going to give our computer um, a bit of a challenge let's just import some more clips so we have a bit more of a timeline going on here what we want to do is go ahead up here to this toggle at the top of our viewer and choose proxy from the media options. At the moment you can see it's ticked to playback using optimized original files, but if we choose proxy then it's going to play at a much lower resolution. And you can see we have absolutely no trouble with playback now. And I can scrub through this no problem. Now this is because that all the files have actually transcoded. If we go back into the uh, background tasks menu, you can see there's no tasks running. But sometimes when you toggle proxy, these files might be read because it hasn't uh, transcoded all of the files. But it has for us, which is fantastic. But if we scroll down here, you can see that it has a proxy uh, green dot here, which lets us know there is a proxy version available, which is great. Okay, so if we were to go ahead and export this sequence now, if we export master file, you can see the estimated file size is about one gigabyte, which is sort of expected. It's not quite right. Considering we're exporting at a fairly high resolution, you'd expect the data rate to actually be a little bit higher than that. And you can see the video codec is actually source Apple ProRes 42 proxy. So it's actually using the proxy files rather than the actual source files. So what you wanna make sure you do is press cancel and make sure that when you're ready to export you turn it back to optimize original media in this drop down menu and then when we go ahead and choose master file you can see that the expected size is now three and a half gigabytes you can even make this change here on this video codec option and change this to proxy here and then back to source as well if you so wish so you don't have to uh, toggle from this menu but if you're going to do a few exports and a few renders out, I recommend you make the toggle here first so that you don't accidentally export proxy resolutions from somewhere else. When you're working with 4K files, I'd also recommend that from this drop down menu, you choose better for performance for quality of playback rather than better quality, just so that 
it's okay to lose a bit of sharpness. The most important thing is that you get the flow of your edit just right. The actual sharpness of the image will come uh, when you enjoy the movie. You're just trying to you know, construct the film. I wouldn't necessarily worry about sharpness during playback this early on into the construction of the edit. So always choose better performance and remember when you're editing, go for proxy. And it's actually that easy to work with proxy files. There's nothing else to it. Final Cut does everything in the background, which is really great. And I'm actually hoping to share some information on using red files and proxies in the future because red has a bit more metadata to play with, which is really cool. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was uh, useful. And again, I just wanted to thank Videoblocks, which is essentially a subscription-based stock media archive with uh, premium like 4K and HD uh, time lapses, aerials, nature, international locations, slow motion stuff. Like, um, They also have like After Effects templates. I used to do some After Effects tutorials, so that might be of interest and uh, of use for you guys. I mean, they're adding more and more stuff all the time, so I don't know. Maybe they'll do Final Cut stuff, I don't know. I can't speak for them, really. Anyway, it's all 100% royalty free, so I can use this footage commercially now. And if you guys sign up to the 7 day free trial, you can download as much stuff as you want and you don't lose your license when your subscription ends, which is really cool. So you can use the footage on commercial projects if you want to have an aerial shot to improve like the production values of your short film. It's really cool and it's definitely worth checking out. I'm sure there'll be something... Uh, in the library for you. They literally uh, have hundreds of thousands of stuff. Videoblocks also assure me that their stuff is as good if not better than all the other uh, stock footage websites and because it's subscription based most people actually only end up paying like a dollar per video they download because they just download and use so much. Uh, but that's Videoblocks. Check out the link and everything and I just want to thank them again for helping provide me with a really cool high res footage for this tutorial but thanks for watching and i'll see you guys again with a brand new final cut pro tutorial in the future i guess there's also some glove compartment stuff coming out ah i'll speak to you guys soon